Alright well, guys, uh, welcome to another song of Uncle Devious Today uh, I'm going to take you guys through um, basically uh, the fundamentals for real application clusters. Um, I'm just going to focus more on the internal uh, material uh, today. Uh, basically, when I, when I say internal, I'm referring to um, nodes, uh, different processes, um, and basically, and also the network, um, and, how, and how basically the uh, the, communi the, communi the communication takes place uh, within a within a real application cluster environment. Okay, so make sure I get right. Okay, so basically, um, what is a real application, real application cluster? It's a uh, it's a it's an open created method providing high variability, scalability, and recoverability to database users. So pretty much what it does is, is a, um, if you look at um, the, uh, the diagram, the, uh, diagram that I have up here, or the picture, picture that I have up here, uh, so basically what you have is you have, a, uh, you have an environment where you can have multiple instances, uh, basically all um, basically um, connected to the same database. And these two instances, also referred to as nodes, have a, uh, a communication mechanism that allows for them to basically know exactly what's going on uh, between them. Um, so this is another diagram for the, um, the communication. So basically as a user what you do is you are uh, you're basically connecting yourself um, to a, uh, a shared environment. Um, and so if you look at this one, this is basically, these are, these are what, what, again, these are nodes. And then these nodes all ha they have a shared cache, and they also have an interconnect uh, that allows them to basically uh, communicate um, all type of uh, information about about your session um, back and going back and forth. Um, so basically, let's say you you as a user basically if let's say you have a, you have a session uh, created on this on this node, and let's say your session fails. Uh, basically, what's going to happen is that your session is going to be moved over to this one if this one is available. And so that's why, again, I refer to it as high availability, um, recoverability, and also scalability. Um, so, and all these um, all these nodes have a um, have a, a shared um, storage um, area. Uh, so basically, uh, the cache um, is basically what um, the, the cache is common for all of them. So. Um, the data, the data set that you're looking for. Again, you connect, you connect it to yourself to basically one single database. This is actually inside the database. So uh, pretty much, um, you know, it's gonna be it's a typical, it's a typical connection. But uh, basically, you just have a failover uh, system. You know, uh, if you experience a um, a uh, session failure or, or system failure on one of the nodes. <coughs> And basically, uh, so in terms of a node, what is a node? So a node is uh, going back to uh, you know the very um, basic um, definition, you know, in terms of Oracle. Uh, a node basically is an, is an instance. It's the collection, it's a combination of uh, memory memory structures and background processes. So um, pretty much everything you can think of uh, of uh, memory structures like uh, the database buffer. Large pool, share pool, uh, we do log buffer, and then background possibly you can think of um, clusters like Tmon, Smon, um, archive, uh, archiver, database writer. Um, we have all these. Uh, again, the node is just a, a regular instance. And so basically, in terms of a, uh, in terms of a, in terms of a uh, reapplication uh, network and reapplication cluster environment, basically what you have is. Um, we have the node. Um, again, I took these from these images from um, you know uh, online. I found these images online. So basically, in terms of node, um, this could be, again, this could be it doesn't have to be Linux, it could be Windows or whichever environment you have. These nodes all have to be. Uh, I have to have a uh, a, uh, a an IP a, via, a virtual IP address um, assigned to them. Um, so basically. What you have, what you see is that um, as you're setting up uh, your reapplication cluster, um, basically Oracle is going to rely on this. On uh, again, the uh, in terms of the which the, which uh, which IP 
I just have done it. Um, like what? Which one? Which one is which? Uh, the private, the private uh, VIP address is actually the one that um is actually the ETH one. And you guys will be able to set that up. Um, you know, when you when you run um the things for IP config command, you'll be able to figure out what your ETH one is. And then your public, your public uh IP address is gonna be referred to as ETH uh, zero. Uh, again, you can you're gonna be able to configure that um, in your system. And for in terms of the environment, uh, uh, for the environments, you can um, it's it's I know for for Windows, you can like you do it in the um, in the in the um, host file. If you if you see host file, yeah, it should be it should be it should be all be there in the host file. So you just um, um, basically um, designate uh, which one is the private VIP and which one is the public VIP. Um, in that etc uh, host file and okay and in terms of how the nodes are booted up um, again remember you have a you have a uh, you have a you have a, you have it again typically what you would have is you would just have a um, you know if you're on Windows you would just boot up a service right and then basically that's gonna um, boot up the service and then you start the instance and you have you start you are able to access the database then. But in terms of um, the uh, uh, the the uh, rack in terms of rack environment, basically what you have to, what you have is um, basically it all starts with the OS and then it goes to so the OS system that's the first uh, is the first thing to be booted up and the next thing is the Oracle clusterware. And then after the Oracle clusterware is booted up um, basically, you have again cluster includes uh, all these different services, QoS, Web Manager, OCC, OC, SSD. After these are booted up, then you have the assignment of the, v of the VIP, the virtual app, the virtual IP addresses. Um, and after these are booted up, you have uh, the ASM automatic automatic store and management event started. Um, again, um, starting with 11G, ASM is a uh, uh, actually you know what not 11G but I think it's 10G. You have an you have an ASM instance that's that's actually concurrently running uh, with the Oracle software. So uh, basically, again, this is the next step. So that instance is going to be started. And then the fourth one is like your actual your Oracle instance. So um, your software instance is going to be started. Um, next thing, next is going to be you're going to be uh, connected to the uh, to the listener. And then from the listener, you can go you can go over to the service. I know the uh the this image is actually covering up this service, but this is this is service that I have right here. Um so uh typically but typically as I told you guys already you would have the upper system booting up. Um you would have a uh let, let's say we didn't have any um you know any cluster or ASM again, uh you just won't have a uh your simple instance, you know, uh no 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 uh no no uh, um not this type of um uh, storage but just like a let's say a file system storage. We we'll just go from open system to instance to listener and then to service. Um, but uh, with rack, uh, things are a little bit more, um, like more, um, more, um, the more, you know, the the, the the startup process is a little bit more expanded. So, uh, but it does it doesn't affect the time. Um, it's just you know, it it, it boots up as 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 uh, as any other as as it as it could boot up for a. Uh, for a single node instance, and in terms of uh, in terms of rack, like you have important, you have a really important uh, daemon or, or processor. So you have uh, you have uh, the CSSD, uh, the CSS daemon, the cluster synchronization service daemon, and you have the um, you have the cluster ready service daemon, you have the Oracle Hyper ready service daemon. So basically, so when you start up your um, CSS, CSSD actually applies to a single node. So if you have a, if you have a, a single node or a standalone server uh, set up with uh, great infrastructure, again, I'm talking, I'm referring to uh, 11 GRC specifically. Um, this this service is actually going to uh, be pulled up, you know, for that standalone server. This is more for when you're ready to have a uh, a cluster environment. Uh, when, when you when you already have the clusters um, basically set up and you just want to um, basically just start a cluster work. Uh, the CRSD is going to be responsible for um, for that cluster work. And then also, so at the same time that you start up the CSS, 
uh, D, uh, CSS daemon. You also want to start up the OHAS, uh, Oracle High Reverie Service daemon. And basically, what this what this daemon do does is basically it's going to start up three agents. It's going to start up the CSSD agent, uh, which is going to start up the OCSSD. Uh, this is another this is an, another internal uh, process. Uh, it's going to start up the OAuth agent, uh, and then attach with this OAuth agent. Uh, it's going to be the event, uh, and this event is going to include the CSSD monitor, the CRSD. Um, again, this one, uh, the this mod, um, yeah, some custom file system drivers, and then VIP and the virtual IPs, which is again uh, how you be referring to the nodes. Um, and also, the last agent is going to be the OVA agent. Uh, again, this agent is going to be it's go it has a, its own bin. Um, so, you basically think of it as so you have an agent, you have a bin there. So, like, you know, the uh, the like the they're, they're separate in the sense, but then again. They have the same name, but the fact that it's a bin, you have like um, you have um, um basically resources that are stored inside it. Um, so um, uh, in, inside the bin for origin, you have uh, ASM, and then the last uh service that you have is uh, not even service, but the last process you have is the event manager, the EAVMD. Again, that's just gonna be called it's you know taking place. And then, so in terms of uh, communication for the nodes inside of your application cluster environment, um, basically you have um, you have a concept of network heartbeat, and you have the concept of uh, voting disk heartbeat. For the net network heartbeat, um, basically you have a um, you have so you have a you, okay in, in the environment you have different nodes, and the way that they communicate is 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 using the uh, the heartbeat. So within what the what the heart, what network heartbeat is basically. It's um, it's an ex it's an ex it's an expected um, so like signaling from one node to the other node that um, that basically I'm still I'm still running and I'm still available um, and basically if the node is no longer you know no long no longer uh, submit this heartbeat then what's gonna happen is that node is gonna be evicted from the network um, because again it failed to submit you know it doesn't have a network it, but, but within the network. The nodes when I would uh, uh, figure out what it, what uh, its hobby, and then in terms of uh, in terms the next one is going to be voting this hobby. So in terms of the voting disk, uh, basically you in, you have it. So what it what happens is that the, the node, like the different nodes in the uh, in the in a rack environment, actually communicate with the voting disk. And what they do is they actually um, they have two blocks in the voting disk. One is the one is the kill block and one is the whole block. And so basically what happens is that they have to. Um, they have to so as they're communicating with the voting disk, if they are not if they are not submitting their heartbeat to the voting disk, what's gonna happen is that they are going to um, they're going to be evicted, um, or they are going to basically uh, again um, like they see things can happen. Um, voting is gonna get rid of them. They're gonna get rid of them. They're gonna uh, get rid. Of, they're gonna so like take themselves out of the out of the out of the um, network. Uh, again, that's the reason why they're writing the voting disk. Again, the voting disk is basically just monitoring, uh, you know, the all the nodes that are part of the cluster. This is a sort of a um, this is a sort of a um, you know secondary um, check, um, you know, and the first the first one is the network heartbeat. And again, the voting disk has a uh, uh, two two very important blocks: the uh, kill block and the whole block. And okay, and then these are some of the parameters that are very important. Um, the first one is the um, is the, the disk timeout. Basically, it's the length of time uh, for disk um, I/O to complete. In between nodes, this is actually referring to the um, the concept of uh, network heartbeat, where the two nodes are communicating. Um, if this if a node is taking too long. Uh, for um, for this IO, um, again, this is measuring second. What's gonna happen is that again, if there's no network heartbeat, the, that node is gonna be evicted from the network. And also the next the next uh, parameter is the miscount. So basically, the miscount is a uh, is enough time a node has to submit um, a um, a uh, network heartbeat again. Um, so actually, you know what? The first one is actually not the uh, network hobby, it's the voting disk hobby. 
so we did this guy off. Um, so yeah, she be she be the um the this guy off the uh, when this more more the two more friends of the one is the second one is the um is the the one it's actually referred to the night board heartbeat but basically um you have to submit the network don't have to submit a heartbeat to put in a uh so that when it's a time when it's measuring in second and if the node does not do it then it's gonna be evicted from that network uh okay and then some these are this is just a uh an example of the commands that you use to set uh the parameter um just see how it is um that stands for trust the service services control um need control yeah you control um query css and then um basically you just point a parameter and then if you want to set that parameter if that got a parameter you just issue the next the next command to see how set this is parameter and you put in the value and then okay and and basically this is just a uh, again this is a diagram of, of what's taking place so uh, in terms of the uh I'm going to go from top to bottom so from the top you have uh, as I explained earlier you have a uh, a an in, in connect for the two nodes and basically this is where the network hobby comes in so as they're communicating uh, each node has to submit a hobby to the other node so, uh, so that so that that node uh, is aware of you know them being available for you know to uh, again for to uh, keep to advance the um, you know the high availability and the availability of um, you of the of the assets. And also, if you look at uh, if you on the um, so on the side, you have again the, the different IP the IP uh, the different IPs the VIP the IP the private IP or the, or the public IP. And then, oh, okay, then the next one is uh, this is a just hobby, and this is what I was going to earlier about uh, in regards to the voting disk. So they each are writing information to the voting disk, and then again there are two blockchains here um, that are that are basically responsible for um, taking in uh, that information uh, that they're sending. And if one node does not send. Um, information um, and I think the parameters as I we, as we saw as I told you guys did come out what's gonna happen is that uh, basically um, that node is going to be evicted um, it's, it's actually either going to again it's actually going to get rid of itself um, it's going to kick itself out of the network or this one is going to have to get rid of it um, so that is it this is only part one I'll have part two and then I'll go into more details as far as uh, you know um, basically what is the boring disk and you know just uh, just to clarify uh, more of what the uh, rest of the uh, um, environment like many other things that they have to offer thanks for watching